Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. A very, very warm welcome to our this current and today's iteration of our um, Startup Genome Global Webinar Series. We are covering a really important topic um, in these days, and that's the importance of global connectedness, the, the way we collaborate, we cooperate together between ecosystems, between founders, between investors, between all the ecosystem stakeholders. Um, as, as, as the overarching theme, and we want to specifically look at global events, platforms, networks that help us bring people together and build up this, this all important global connectedness, which we will explain as a concept uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Global events, um, something that's hopefully on the horizon, something that's hopefully coming back after a dearth. We all have been working very virtual over the last 15 or so months, and we are now uh, excited that the world is somewhat restarting and we can go back into events that are physical, that are hybrid, um, um, whilst we also continue to, to work to work virtually. Without further ado, let me let me briefly start into um, the presentation, Hannah, if you would move us on a little bit. Brief introduction, why global events matter for startup success? Why is it important that we meet, that we exchange ideas, that we build this overarching concept of global connectedness? And then we would love to dive into a Q&A session. Um, please ask questions. Let's have a lively debate at the end of our, our webinar. So we move it on, Anna. Yeah, our webinar purpose and why, why are we actually hosting the series? And thanks so much for attending. We want to share knowledge, uh, knowledge from us as a firm, but more importantly, from the network of our ecosystems, this, this large network we've been able to build, share best practices, share examples that have worked, talk about those that haven't worked and really provide knowledge and share this as, as broadly as possible. Um, excited to have our partners on board. We are working with in so many, many instances and ecosystems around the world today with the next web as, as an example. Um, and um, we obviously also want to hear your feedback. So if you want to hear, uh, if you want to give us feedback, suggest topics for future iterations, Please email Adam at Startup Genome here on the, on the slide, and we will, we will make sure we pick up um, topics of discussion. Previous topics we covered, cloud-based data platform to track and support your startup ecosystem, multiplying ecosystem growth and policy impact. How can we use data and prioritize gaps in our ecosystem to build a better future-looking strategy? These are all examples, and you can find them all recorded and available at any time on our YouTube channel link here included on the slide. Um, stay updated, stay on, on our webpage, um, future topics. But again, give us some feedback. Um, we, are, we are keen to, to hear from you as practitioners in your ecosystems. What's, what does matter to you? What's keeping you up at night, so to speak, um, in order to um, further develop the agenda? And Hannah, let's move to the next, please. Okay, I'm delighted to introduce um, our panelists and presenters today. Patrick Deleve, founder, Chief Product Officer, there you are, Patrick. Good morning to Amsterdam. Um, founder of the Next Web TNW, based in Amsterdam. Um, uh, an amazing story that that Patrick will tell us about the city of Amsterdam and all the work work TNW is doing in so many locations around the world. Um, also excited to introduce Tala Al Ansari, Director, Head of Innovation um, of Ecosystems and Scale to Dubai. That's um, Tala has a, a hugely important role to play during the expo that's kicking off in October this year, and also in um, designing, putting together the legacy of the expo. So the, the ideas and concepts we will hear about what's happening post expo um, in this exciting location, um, just um, in outside of Dubai. Yeong Yong and Yi Yong Kim um, from the Seoul Metropolitan Government, SMG and SBA will be joining us via pre-recorded video due to time zone differences. Um, Seoul, a city that's hugely ambitious, hugely uh, successful, growing very, very quickly into one of the top ecosystems in the world. We are really excited to hear from them what they are doing in order to build global connectedness to use events. Um, and other, other forms um, in order to bring us together. Last but certainly not least here on our speaker lineup, Cindy Nyam, um, Director of the SWITCH program, part of Enterprise Singapore, and Singapore um, undoubtedly one of the places in Asia where we meet, where we, where we have lots of interaction, highly connected to, to the um, fabric of ecosystems in the world. So great to hear from, from Enterprise Singapore and Cindy as well.
Yeah, it is our mission to accelerate the growth of startup ecosystems as an economic engine through proven policies rooted in practice sourced from our network. That's, that's our mission in life and genome and with all our partners. Um, the economic growth engine couldn't be more important than, than now as we are, as we are um, coming, out of, coming out of the pandemic and uh, dealing with, with economic repercussions. Um, tech entrepreneurship is really showing us the, the way forward. Um, we aim to spread the knowledge of startup ecosystems everywhere as far as possible um, in order to make sure that, that the world can participate in, in the value creation and the knowledge creation of startup ecosystems. The network here, for you, just to, to have a look, more than 40 countries, more than um, 80 cities um, on, on our net, network today. Um, so that's the, that's the network that really provides knowledge peer data, um, insights, policy experiments to learn from, et cetera. And all the speakers today on, on our um, introductory slide are part of this, this large network of ecosystems. Yeah, then let me briefly introduce Seoul. Seoul, a city highly ranked already in, in our Startup Genome Global Startup Ecosystem Report, GSER. You will see that the new rankings coming out on the 22nd of September. Um, Seoul, um, a mega city um, in, in Asia, a mega city that is incredibly successful in creating deep tech technology patents, innovation, um, deep tech clusters, and really has been working hard over the last, last years to accelerate the growth of the Seoul ecosystem um, with good policy, great, great interventions and support for entrepreneurs, for, for their support organizations. Um, really an impressive story, a story to learn from. Um, we are excited to be there next week at um, Try Everything 2021, the large conference hosted in Seoul, and we will later revisit um, the city of Seoul, S SBA and SMG uh, with our pre-recorded video. Patrick, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself. Yes, well, thank you so much, um, Stefan, and uh, for having us here. Uh, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I live in, in the Netherlands. I uh, actually moved out of Amsterdam about a year ago. Uh, now in the, in, the, in the heart of uh, Bildhoven, it's a very small city outside of uh, Amsterdam. Very glad to be here. Um, TMW, uh, as you can see, oh, well, one last thing maybe, I'm, I co-founded the uh, TMW uh, 15 years ago, and uh, I'm also part of the uh, Rotterdam uh, International Advisory Board, um, where I advise them on their international uh, events and MICE strategies. Um, and uh, that's also why my background uh, has uh, not an Amsterdam-based uh, background, but a Rotterdam-based. So what you see behind me is Rotterdam. Um, so TNW, uh, yeah, we, we, we are a global digital brand. We inform, inspire, and connect people who love tech. And we do that through media events and services. Um, so we have a, a fairly large uh, media entity where we write about technology. Uh, we combine that with uh, uh, top-notch events. Uh, our most known event is TNW Conference. It's happening at the end of this month in, in Amsterdam. Uh, we also have uh, uh, three large office spaces. Uh, I think uh, it says 10,000 square meters. It's uh, by now it's uh, 15,000 square meters in Amsterdam uh, that we rent out to uh, to startups and and uh, and scale-ups that are yeah, local and international, and, and uh, we help them to, to grow from there. And we have a uh, more advisory uh, branch where we work with uh, local uh, or with ecosystems, but also uh, large uh, corporates in order to help them innovate faster. Um, we're also part of the Financial Times. Nowadays, uh, so uh, about two years ago, uh, we joined the Financial Times family um, and more to be seen about that in the, in the future, I think. Um, yeah, this, this is some, some, some shots of, about what, what we organize in Amsterdam. Uh, we started 15 years ago, more on that later. Uh, a very small event, 280 people in, in a church. Uh, and, and, and 2019, which was uh, the, the last one pre-COVID, uh, was uh, 15,000 people. And 
it's kind of like, a, yeah, you could say almost a, a business festival um, and uh, people are are enjoying and coming from over over 100 countries to uh, to Amsterdam to visit it. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Back to you. Patrick, very fun memories uh, for many of our, our, our members who joined you in 2019 in Amsterdam. So we, we hope to be back very, very soon in person. Um, Cindy, if I may ask you to also... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Tala, actually. Apologies. Tala, if you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what's going on at the expo. Sure, pleasure. Um, so Tala Lansari here. I um, head the legacy component of building the ecosystem, which is the future of the expo. But I'd first uh, like to start by telling everybody what the expo is. If we could just go to the next slide. So World Expos um, have really always been about uh, global connectedness ever since they started in 1851, which is more than 170 years ago. Every five years, the world would convene uh, through governments and businesses to really talk about um, inventions, innovations, technologies, and how we can progress as mankind altogether. Um, some of the... Um, you know, some of the greatest inventions and innovations that we use in our day-to-day -day lives actually came from World Expos, um, such as robots, ice cream cones, ketchup, elevators, you name it. All these innovations have uh, gone through a global scaling as a result of platforms and global connectedness in events like Expos. If we could just click next. Yeah, excellent. Uh, next again, please. Perfect. So in terms of Expo 2020 Dubai, we are hosting the event. It's actually going to kick off in just about three weeks time. We're going to be hosting the world for six months. We're super excited. Um, our site is huge. It's 4.38 square kilometers. So for all the people on the webinar here, for you to visualize this, this is around 610 football fields. So it's a city on its own within the city of Dubai. Um, next, please. Thanks. So ever since we started planning for this expo, we had a main vision and theme, which was connecting minds, creating the future. And when we think of this theme, it's even more relevant today with what's happened around the world with COVID. Our theme and goal has always been about how could we um, have humanity work together to solve the world's most pressing challenges. To achieve this, we've also um, then brought three sub-themes at the expo. The first one is opportunity. So how can we unlock the potential of individuals, of businesses, of startups and communities to really create a better future for all of us? And the second theme uh, revolves around mobility, talking about the movement of goods, people and ideas. Again, very uh, central to our theme of global connectedness today. And the last theme is sustainability. So how could we do all of this in a sustainable manner, in a way that respects nature and that really doesn't compromise the needs of the future generations as we think of what we need today. Next, please. All right, great. So I'll share other information about the legacy of the Expo later on in the second part of this webinar. Anna, thank you so, so much. I have very fond memories of seeing the construction site and I was so impressed with the size, but also the way you, you've organized it with this huge plaza where everybody can meet and make these these all important connections. So I can't wait to see it in October or November this this yeah. year. And I think the world will be excited to see it. Cindy, if I may ask you to briefly introduce yourself, Enterprise Singapore and all the good things you are doing to attract the world and make us all meet in, in Singapore. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Tala and Stefan. So um, good morning, afternoon and evening to everybody. Um, thanks for having us here. I'm definitely happy to share more about Enterprise Singapore and what we do. Um, as the title slide, uh, suggests, um, our main role is really to grow on Singapore enterprises. Um, next slide, please. So just as we wait for the slides to load, just a little background about us, we are a government surgery body under the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And when we talk about helping Singapore enterprises, uh, really we look at three different areas, um, building capabilities in the different areas that they need, be it productivity, be it financial management. We also look at strengthening their innovation capabilities by helping them build the engine of growth uh, for their future development. And last but not least, it's also about helping them uh, 
according to the co- the content topic today, connected to other ecosystem and to really help them access global opportunities beyond the shores of Singapore. Uh, we certainly don't do this uh, on our own. We also have our other sister agency that also look at other uh, perspective of economic development um, activities that they champion. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll just touch a little bit more on innovation. Uh, we aspire to grow Singapore to be um, the global agent for tech and innovation. And we do that in five key strategies uh, that you see here. Uh, first and foremost, deepening global connections to help um, enable companies, be it startups, the small and medium enterprises in Singapore, connect to other um, global innovation ecosystems around the world to help them with their market access um, strategies and plans. Two, we hope to catalyze more platforms for co-innovation. We want to create opportunities for collaboration and co-innovation for our companies with um, other innovation stakeholders. They could be MNCs, they could be corporates, they could be different government agencies around the world so that they have more opportunities to co-create a new product on their own. Thirdly, we look at strengthening human capital, uh, grooming and growing um, tech uh, and entrepreneur talent to help grow the different emerging industries that we uh, we can observe opportunities in them. Fourth, we also want to catalyze financing opportunities, make sure that we have smart money catalyzing these opportunities. And last but not least, definitely a network of our partners and supporting infrastructure so that at any one point in time, we are able to avail help to a wider pool of startups uh, that are in Singapore. Uh, next slide, please. So on the point about uh, a wide network of uh, ecosystem partners that's available, today um, our innovation and startup ecosystem is only made possible by a very supportive uh, growth environment that we have that is made up of different diverse pool of ecosystem partners that you see uh, on the slides now. So we are home to about 185, maybe now close to 200 um, incubators and accelerators and of course venture capital uh, partners that are in Singapore as well. And at the same time, we also have... Uh, a wide network of IHL, Institute of Higher Learning and Research Institute that also play a big part in growing uh, deep tech startups uh, for us. Uh, next slide, please. So we also take a very keen interest in growing uh, the deep tech activities in Singapore and deep tech startup, which is why um, the research interviews have been a very key partner where we observe a lot of deep startup spin-off that have come up uh, from this different uh, research institute, as well as our other partners such as venture builder, accelerators, who have gone on to help many different startups in Singapore across different sectors uh, to continue to grow their business and really uh, deepen and strengthen their business model. So that's the two minutes just about what we do and who we are. Thanks, Thank definitely. you so much. Thank you so much, Cindy. And whilst we wait for, for the next slide, the importance of global connectedness, theme of theme of our, our, our web webinar today. And you already could hear it from, from the introductions. Patrick building a, a community in the city of Amsterdam, which today is, is a European community with thousands of people coming together and exchanging ideas. The Expo um, bringing bring the same on the international scale and Singapore being one of the, the great connectors in the Asian region. Um, why is this so important? Um, and why is it important now? And if you move to the next slide, let me just briefly introduce the data concept being Startup Genome. You would expect to see some data and, and hear this. What we want to demonstrate here is the better an ecosystem, your entrepreneurs, your investors are connected to the fabric, to these networks of other cities in the world, particularly those that are leading in terms of innovation, in terms of investment. Tapping this knowledge is the precursor of what we call global market reach here on, on the x-axis of our slide, um, which allows companies to very early on start exporting and obviously fueling their scale story. And when we look at the value creation that results from being globally connected, just imagine, nothing is different. You get the same investors, the same entrepreneurs, the same talent, the same knowledge, but you're not connected. You're growing at, at 1x with, with a great level of global connectedness touching into these, these, these fabrics of knowledge and connectivity. Sorry, um, Hannah, if you go back one, you will, you will see an uplift of 2x in the growth of your startups. Everything else is the same. Same venture capital investment. Everything is really the same. It's about the knowledge and, and the ideas that are coming in, seeing innovation elsewhere and, and using them to make your product more competitive getting to know customers and being able to do proof of concepts, sell to them, et cetera, et cetera. So the effects are hugely important and every ecosystem that wants to see a scale-up segment really needs to work on being globally connected. I can say from our rankings that we are looking at for 250 plus cities this year, global connectedness is not obvious for every ecosystem in the world. Many have great 
ingredients basically cooking up an ecosystem but they are lacking this this connectivity to others restricting uh, restricting um, the growth of their entrepreneurs our own founder founded a company and he he didn't live global connectedness himself founded a life sciences company only to find out a year later on on a conference that somebody else really had run with the idea and he basically could stop burn through venture capital the idea wasn't competitive somebody else was faster something he had easily seen had he had he made the effort to, to visit two or three of these life sciences conferences where his competitor much more advanced was already present that's a, that's a real life example of what global connectedness also, also means really seeing these developments early on and taking advantage of them rather than be, being surprised. So 2x, that's the one to remember. It's also a very important political argument if you do budget planning, if you need to convince within government, within your agencies that more needs doing in terms of traveling, in terms of hosting conferences, etc. Um, that's probably the most striking um, hard data-based argument um, that can be made. And Hannah, if you move us on a little bit. Apologies, our connection seems to be a tiny bit slow. Yeah, uh, again, the, the same point proven here, global connectedness, x-axis, that's, that's where it starts. That's making the connections. What's the result of it? Global market reach here shown on the y-axis. If you like data, you will see the correlation. Global market reach is the ability of your startups, of your founders to export outside of their domestic markets. And I think the correlation could not be more clear than, than what we are showing here with real life data from 250 plus ecosystem. So let's make these connections. And the question is how? That's what we want to dive in right now. Anna, if you move it, move it on a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, the next slide, please. Okay, and then then let us let us please briefly show what, what is happening in Seoul, the city, I, I made the point in our introduction, vibrant ecosystem. Um, but again, real, realizing that language difference, being, being in a part of, uh, of the world in Asia, um, that um, has not yet made all the connections it possibly could make, particularly a deep tech startup um, ecosystem in which there are many, many hubs in North America, in Europe and other Asian parts of uh, um, cities where this global connectedness is so important. And I can say SMG, SBA, the, the Seoul government is making a lot of effort. Patrick, you know, it, you've been working with SMG in the past as well um, in, order to, in order to build these all important connections. We are excited to be there next, next week and to participate and, and really, really help um, build out connectivity between entrepreneurs and uh, connectivity between international investors and the Seoul, the Seoul startup ecosystem. But let's dive into the presentation um, from Yeon and Yi Yong um, for, for a minute or so. Hello, Anna, everyone. This us. is Jeon Jung. I am a manager at Seoul Metropolitan Government. It is a great pleasure that I got a chance to give a presentation at this meaningful webinar. And I do appreciate Startup Genome for having me and my colleague today. Uh, I will briefly talk about a few key points of Seoul startup ecosystem. And my colleague from SBA will give a presentation about Try Everything 2021, the global tech event at Seoul, which will be held in two weeks, which is very soon. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Seoul Metropolitan Government, SMG for short, let me briefly introduce the organization I belong to. SMG is one of the local governments of South Korea and I am particularly working for Startup Policy Division. And we have Seoul Business Agency, SBA for short, which is a government affiliated agency of SMG that helps implementing the policies. I truly believe that public and private sector in Seoul has cooperated and worked hard to vibrate Seoul's ecosystem. As a result, there are about 53K tech-based startups and nine unicorns in Seoul. Last year, there were 3.76 billion US dollar investments and 81 startups in Seoul had attracted more than 10 million US dollar funding. So in this slide, you can see clusters by subsector in Seoul. For instance, 
biotech startups and facilities are in Hongneung area. Big tech and AI startups are in Yangjie. There are 45 startup supporting facilities in Seoul, and about 12K startups are incubated at the center last year. And we also have Center for Foreign Startups in an effort to make Seoul as a global hub. SMG truly concerns a lot on global connectedness, so we make policies to help startups' global market reach. I brought two most recent projects to share with you. So we had opened the Seoul Startup Hub Ho Chi Minh, which serves as a local hub to assist startups in Seoul to make overseas entry with active support from foreign government agencies. So this is the first case in which SMG's startup uh, policy is exported overseas. And also it's the first ever global hub for startups. Uh, also the Korea International Trade Association and Seoul Startup Hub will utilize Barcelona, Spain as the stage for Korean startups global scale up and to promote overseas testbed projects. We expect that the testbed business will provide an opportunity for Korean startups to test their innovative technologies and solutions abroad. We also believe that global tech events really matter for startup success because it provides a platform where startups can share their insights and dreams with other companies, investors, and partners. Therefore, we do believe that organizing a global tech event in Seoul is one of the role that is required to us as a, as a public sector. So before the COVID-19 era, we went to business trip a lot to participate global tech events all over the world for the reference. In TNW 2019, director of my division was invited as a speaker in the session named Fostering Attractiveness, the Case of Asian Megacities. We've also been to Slush 2019, and the beauty mayor for economy visited the secretariat of Slush and got a chance to learn their know-how and share experiences. The former mayor of Seoul was invited as a keynote speaker in CES last year in the session titled The Reality of Smart City Development. So in these big tech events, we were able to be connected with the people all over the world. And in some business trip, some talented startups in Seoul were accompanied with us to the trip. And we have made an appointment with global big company or VCs for them. So from now on, Jiyoung will give you in detail explanation about our event, Try Everything 2021. So Jiyoung, could you please lead? Yeah. Hello, hello. This is SDH Jiyoung Kim, the person in charge of Try Everything 2021. SBA is a business support institution for SME in Seoul, run by Seoul Metropolitan Government. It was established to promote and develop industries and to provide comprehensive and systemic support to SME located in Seoul. Try Everything 2021 is a global grand festival for startup companies that has been organized by Seoul in order to revitalize the startup environment, wherein the festival symbolizes the startup mindset of have no fear of failure and try everything. The slogan of this year's festival is Jump Up, Scale Up, and while the potential of startup was unblocked last year through the slogan of Make It Possible. This year's slogan represents the goal of scaling up to the next level and promoting growth of startups through sharing a variety of information and know-how. Try Everything 2021 is held from September 15th through 17th at Seoul Shula Hotel, and at the same time will be broadcast live on YouTube. 
In particular, this year's keynote speech will be presented by Jason Sanker, who was selected by Bloomberg as the world's number one futurist and the writer of Amazon's number one bestseller, World After COVID-19. And Stefan Trojanski, who is an expert in future technologies like VR and video, and the CEO of Scanline VFX, which produced a variety of videos with visual effects for example, in the movie Avengers, where in the keynote speech will provide insight regarding the revolution and future of startups. Let us preview the set. Global Startup Festival. Lectures, seminars, global market entry, meetup, pitching, competition, online exhibition, activation of startup ecosystem. Try everything 2021. Here are the four spectator aspects of Try Everything 2021 to consider in order to further enjoy this sensational stage. First, in order to provide the opportunities for sharing insight and trends with the global big shots, the scale of strategies of variety of countries, including the United States, Germany, Poland, Spain, etc., will be investigated and startup investment and overseas expansion will be supported through the middle pitch with the global VC. Second, the opportunities for building mutual cooperation with around 400 startups and specialized organizations are provided through networking, including open innovation challenges with the global cooperation, VC and AC, etc. Third, in order to revitalize the startup culture and startup environment, 91 projects, including IR and networking, are being held through Seoul for two months from August 1st through September 30th. First, the opportunities for making investment are provided through online meetups between the startups and investors. 97 VC and AC companies are Around 100 IP specialized organizations participate in order to promote the growth of startups by providing opportunities to make investment and business cooperation through the building of mutual matches between startups and investors. Apologies, needed to unmute myself. Thank you to Yeon and Yi Young for, for giving us a little bit of insight. I think what you can see is um, Seoul, as many others, trying to, to use um, a flagship event to again bring the community together in the city, but also to invite the world. And, and, and it's maybe indicative. Last year we met on video cameras, this year we are able to, to travel again and really start making these connections here. As, as having said, a lot of focus on deep tech, a lot of focus on international venture capital in order to, to build out these networks. Should you be should you be in Seoul next week, please let us know. We're most happy to meet. I think starting from here, Patrick, I want you to invite to give us a little bit of, of an overview of your experience, what, what is working in terms of building global connectedness through events, congresses, networks of, of, of any, any means in the end. And I think from your perspective, you might have the, the broadest overview. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think one of the things uh, that helps with uh, with setting up an ecosystem and, and making that ecosystem global connected is of course that, yeah, you need to meet people um, from abroad and you need to bring them together. So events in that uh, way work very well. But I do think, you know, that, that, that uh, we, we, we have seen a big shift. So where we went from a, uh, a meet in person uh, world first and then uh, follow up a virtual, we now actually, uh, go for, uh, from a virtual first world to the follow-up at an event, um, which is a uh, super interesting uh, thing uh, that is going on. And of course, due to, to COVID and the travel restrictions that, that, that we have, and hopefully, um, you know, we, we can go back to uh, 
uh, and meeting each other more often in person because that's actually where 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 the fun happens. Um, and I think one uh, one of the the issues with events is that it's very hard to measure the impact, and that is also for governments, of course, uh, difficult because. Um, you know, you want to be able to say kind of like my poli- we did this, we did, uh, we we made these decisions, these policies, and this is the impact that we have. I think when we started 15 years ago, there was nothing, nobody was measuring anything. Now we have uh, uh, companies like Startup Genome uh, 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 that are uh, looking at this from uh, a data uh, point of view and 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 ranking cities uh, at various um, uh, various levels which is very useful. Um, and also, uh, I think the next step is also to measure uh, for us as uh, in the events industry is to measure the impact of events. So what we what we say is we kind of like, we engineer for serendipity. That's one, one of the things that, that we say as an organizer. So you don't necessarily, you know, you don't uh, give out uh, or, or bring uh, 2000 people over and that's it. So you also want to, Make sure that you have the right balance between um, buyers and sellers, investors and startups, investors and investors, investors and LPs, um, so that there can be made uh, this. I think you at, at sort of genome you call this a fabric of uh, an, uh, your network, um, and uh, it's important to have local and international um, uh, people at attending that event. Um, and then, yeah, then nowadays, of course, the beauty is that we can measure a lot uh, with uh, 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 virtual events happening, but also in app. So we at, an, at, at TNW have spent a lot of time on uh, kind of like measuring what, uh, what, can, what is coming out of um, yeah, an event and where did this meeting happen? Did the meeting happen at our event? Can you go back one slide? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and um, so that is, I think, I think important to uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, when 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 yeah working on an event is also uh, thinking about how can we measure the impact of this event. So what what happens basically if you organize an event? You you can say kind of like, hey, we're showcasing an ecosystem. This is what we did started 15 years ago in Amsterdam. Basically. You, you have a mix between your own startups and scale-ups and international ones, and everybody's meeting each other, but everybody who's there is also enjoying the city. That's basically the starting point. This is attracting new funding in the end um, because the investor to investor network is, um, uh, is working out and international investors that see interesting companies, they're not necessarily going to invest directly in, into your local startups. They always look for um, uh, local partners to invest with. Um, and that's what what, hap- what started happening. We have the good startups in, in Amsterdam. They were attracting uh, a lot of funding uh, from the from uh, uh, people they met at, uh, amongst others, our event. And with that money, they needed to attract talent. But yeah, uh, the city also had something going on for itself. Is the, the quality of life here is really good. So a lot of people want to live in Amsterdam. There is, um, I think, if you look at the number of tech jobs available in Amsterdam, at some point, I think this is this is an old stat, but it's like five years old stat. At that moment, uh, Amsterdam was not in the top 40 cities in the number of um, uh, job openings in in tech, but it was in the in the top three where people wanted to work in tech. So, and uh, this is data from LinkedIn. And, and that says something about, okay, a lot of people want to work in the city. We were able to attract a very high quality international talent, but also um, a university started to uh, roll out uh, 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 special programs for, for tech. And um, uh, yeah, there was an, a huge um, brain increase in the region. And then, yeah, if you then position yourself as a tech hub, and I think that the, the government of Amsterdam, they, they did a great job and they invested a lot of money as well. Um, 
uh, they promoted themselves as a, as a, a true uh, uh, entrepreneurial city, uh, open for everybody, any religion, doesn't matter. Um, and um, yeah, we were able to uh, uh, attract uh, more and more um, companies from abroad to open up offices in Amsterdam. So I think that is, you know, uh, the event was definitely uh, a, 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 a catal uh, catalyst of uh, of all this and 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 uh, added fuel to the fire that was already there. And I think, and and I hope, I, I'm, I'm sure that the startup genome can confirm this. And I heard Stefan saying also something. A lot of the cities have those ingredients, but they might not have the uh, the global connectedness yet, or they might not have the the right approach yet, but if you have uh, uh, certain in uh, certain um, ingredients in your city, you can you can really build uh, on that, and events really help. Next slide, please. So, um, yeah, we measure uh, the direct impact of, of events. So you have, uh, you know, you can work on total numbers of attendees, how many are from uh, coming from abroad, how, how much travel is involved. So you can you can calculate the total um, economic impact, uh, direct expenditures uh, from hotels to shopping to uh, transportation, etc. Um, but I think the main thing that is um, interesting for cities to consider, you know, growing your tech ecosystem in general and, and events could be a part of it, is uh, that the best business model is, is owned uh, by, by the government, actually. It's, uh, it's taxes, right? It's corporate tax and, 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 and income tax. So if you can create a thousand jobs uh, in your city, uh, high paying jobs, that really um, drives uh, the, the, yeah, the tax income for, for the city. And this is something I'm pretty sure that uh, the governments are getting more and more aware of that uh, yeah, uh, taxes are uh, actually a great business model and they need to uh, start finding ways to attract international talent in order to uh, yeah, uh, have a more economic and also in the end social impact. In, in their city. Then the last slide is what, you know, what if you look at it, 15 years of uh, uh, TNW in, in the city of Amsterdam. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of visitors, of course, international visitors, over 100,000 people have visited Amsterdam uh, during our event. We don't have the data how often they ca came back, but you can you can multiply that number with uh, a couple of times that they have uh, been coming back over the years, um, and this also created a lot of jobs because we were able to attract, uh, for instance, um, uh, Uber, uh, Twitter, Facebook, opening offices in Amsterdam, and and uh, now Uber is, um, I think they just signed a new office space, forty thousand square meters in Amsterdam, and hiring another 2,000 people in Amsterdam. Um, so this is just one example of where the event, where we invited the speaker from Uber and we were visiting Uber ourselves in, in San Francisco when there were like 20 people. Uh, so there was this, there was this international uh, uh, connectiveness, uh, connectedness already. And once they needed to open an office in Europe, yeah, then, of course, they're going to consider cities where they know people, where they've been, where they had a good time and where they know that there is a, 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 yeah, an interesting um, space to, to open up offices. Um, I think, yeah, we, we can talk much further into this, but this shows a little bit of kind of like, okay, this is what we, what we could do for Amsterdam. I think there's another great example. It's called Web Summit. Uh, everybody's well aware of that, of course. And I think Lisbon did a yeah, it was <laughs> made a very smart move. They invest a lot of money, but it's paying off for them. And um, uh, they put themselves on the map, created hundreds or thousands of, of jobs, and is now also a very thriving ecosystem. So I think there's two examples actually of of how a large scale event that is also organized, I must say, by people who really understand this, the 
the sector. It's not organized by, by, by event organizers. It's organized by tech entrepreneurs themselves. And I think that is also something, it's, it's really hard to do this from, from the outside, I think. Um, but anyway, so that this is, this is one uh, example of, of how you can create impact economic, economically and socially um, on a city. Back to you, Seth. Patrick, thanks so much. And you, you, you coined the word catalytic TNW, the, the, the event you, you started many years ago. And what did you say, Patrick, in a church? I didn't know that with, with a few people. Um, it really has been catalytic for, for Amsterdam as an ecosystem. When we look at Amsterdam for years, it is one of three cities in the world that has constantly outperformed its, its rise in our rankings. And that happens very, very rarely extremely rarely there are only three cities in the world Amsterdam being one of them who've managed to do that over a um, sequence of years so you really can see how an initial spark has attracted the global connectedness the ideas and, and Patrick you, you mentioned it the, the inflow of other companies like Uber like Facebook um, but certainly also quite a lot of investment capital maybe let's a little bit later in our Q&A go, go also into that perspective how can I use these platforms in, in order to attract the smart money Tala was referring to it and Tala mentioning you tell us a little bit more what are your plans for the expo and maybe if you could if you do have any ideas also for the expo legacy because the expo obviously gives you this huge platform over the next next year but i'm pretty sure you will also try to make this more sustained over years to come and um, maybe we can hear a story very similar to what patrick told us just just a few minutes ago Tana, sure, over to so you. Sure. So I think once the expo is over, we're definitely planning to measure the impact of this event with some of the great KPIs that Patrick shared with us earlier. In terms of the World Expo, um, we have designed a calendar which is public on our website. We've got a few thematic weeks, as you can see on the screen right here, so that um, entrepreneurs that are visiting us can basically make the most of their visit to the expo. So if you're a startup, for example, that's focused on travel, you might want to visit us in January to make the most out of your trip with the focus on the industry that you're looking into. Uh, if we can just go to the next slide, please. So to also support startups uh, to make the most of uh, their visit during the expo, their contribution to this event, um, there's a few facts we do want to share. The first one is um, startups have really always been central to us planning this World Expo. And uh, more than 52% of the contracts at the Expo itself have actually been awarded to startups and SMEs. So they're um, helping us host this global event. Around one third of our spend has gone to startups and SMEs. Uh, we've also got around 13,700 uh, startups and SMEs which have registered on our app to do business at the Expo. Uh, aside from that, I encourage all the listeners who are on this webinar today to download our business to business app from the App Store. Um, it basically allows you to make the most of your trip, um, uh, you know, and helps us basically do what Patrick mentioned earlier, which was engineering serendipity when you visit the expo. Uh, we will use AI technology and this app platform to help match make you to relevant entities that you might want to speak to, to events that match your interest the most. Uh, just to help people make the most of the event again and really help with this global connectedness. Uh, next slide, please. So I did share with you so far um, a few elements of how the Expo uh, is going to focus on supporting startups and global connectedness. But we carry that mission forward in our legacy of the Expo, which is called District 2020. Next slide, please. So once, the, uh, once Dubai hosts the World Expo, we will be having that going on for six months. And then we will have a six month transition as you can see in the timeline right here. And then we will immediately open up our doors as District 2020. This is a helicopter view of our site at District 2020. And this is where we're going to build an innovation and startup ecosystem in Dubai as the legacy of this World Expo. A global connectedness will be just as important to this ecosystem as it is to the Expo itself. Uh, once we build this community together, as it reaches full capacity, we will have a population of around 145,000 people from all over the world. Next slide, please. 
So um, this is just uh, to kind of showcase that as we build the legacy of the Expo District 2020, it will be a human centric city with an innovation ecosystem that continues to also focus on a balanced lifestyle and sustainability as well. Next slide. So when we say we're building a curated innovation ecosystem in District 2020, we say it's curated because it focuses on four specific industries and we will be attracting a lot of startups and businesses that relate to those. Uh, the first one is smart logistics, smart mobility, smart cities and smart manufacturing. So those are the four areas that District 2020 will curate its innovation ecosystem around, as well as all the technologies that support these industries. So when you look at the stakeholders that we'll be bringing to District 2020, we will have corporations, governments, academia, investors, but we'll also have accelerators and startups, which are a key component of building the city of the future together. When we want to build this ecosystem, we realize that a key component is to continue this global connectedness and this collaboration effort. And so we will basically um, have connections take place through events which we will continue to host on a regular basis in District 2020. Uh, some huge global events, uh, which are the size of, for example, Web Summit and TNW, as well as smaller events that happen regularly and quarterly in our ecosystem to help build those connections. These connections will enable startups to get access to government projects, to deal flow in our ecosystem, access to funding through VCs. And the last part we're really excited to share when it comes to um, providing opportunities for startups and uh, connectivity is we will be having a living lab uh, space at District 2020. And when you think of this lab, it's a dedicated area where startups can plug and play into the 5G networks that we have at District 2020. So they could showcase their technologies and solutions to VCs, to governments, to Fortune 500 companies to either invest into them, buy them out, work with them on these innovations, build and reiterate new technologies. And all this will be facilitated through events, which um, just reiterates their importance, basically. Next slide, please. Uh, the last component we want to share with everybody on the call today is another uh, initiative that we have at District 2020 as a part of our ecosystem to really help startups soft land into Dubai and District 2020. This program is called Scale to Dubai. Next slide, please. So Scale to Dubai is District 2020's global entrepreneur program. It will provide startups with all the benefits that you see in the slide right here, such as two years of free working space, visa, business setup, but also access to what we call a calendar of social and networking events to continue to engage and build in this ecosystem and create the connections that are needed. Um, and any startup or small business that's interested to be part of this program needs to either align to the industries that we focus on at District 2020 or have technologies that support our industries of focus. Uh, next slide, please. So to share um, our timelines, the Scale to Dubai uh, program is actually accepting submissions as of this week in September or up until the end of this year in December. So I encourage all startups on this call today to leverage this opportunity and apply to the program. We will have a panel of technical judges at the World Expo evaluate all the applications that we have. And then we will announce 80 to 100 finalists that will join us in District 2020 to be part of our first cohort. And then every year at District 2020, we will have a new cohort join, which is around the same size of 80 to 100 startups. So we're very committed to supporting startups in the scaling process and in um, you know, leveraging this ecosystem that we have in Dubai and at District 2020. Next, please. Um, this is just the last slide. I'll just leave it up here for a few seconds for anyone who wants to capture the link to our website and to apply to our program. We'd love to have you join our community. Thanks. Tyler, thanks for give, giving us um, such an overview. I admire the, the ambition and, and, and the thinking and to, to create out of an event, a conference, a world expert, to create a legacy over years. It's fascinating. I, I think we will see great things as a meeting platform where we build this, this fabric of knowledge, where we meet, we exchange ideas um, in the MENA region. I think it's, it's awesome and can't, can't wait to see it. Cindy, very briefly, we are a little bit late in our webinar, but maybe you could give us a few, a few short pointers towards 
Um, yeah, the Singapore definitely. experience, you've put Singapore on the map for, for entrepreneurs, for larger tech companies, certainly for international venture capital um, over years. Um, what's the secret formula? Yeah, um, I think we are definitely happy to share a few initiatives that we have uh, pertaining to connecting um, the Singapore ecosystem to global um, ec uh, innovation ecosystem. One of it is really um, Global Innovation Alliance, which I will call um, GIA for short. Um, next slide, please. So GIA is a network of Singapore and our overseas partners that connects the Singapore business community to business and tech communities in different major innovation hubs. We started in 2017. Uh, if we want to kind of talk about impact, uh, we have helped about close to 800 um, Singapore tech startup and SMEs um, just over the span of four years. Within the GIA program, there are two key initiatives. One, um, acceleration program, which are essentially market access program where we help Singapore companies and startup connect and accelerate their market penetration into overseas market and to date we have grown that network to about 15 cities around the world and about 160 companies have gone through that program with us. Uh, we also have what we call the co-innovation program which helps look at uh, cross-border collaboration be it a uh, co innovation project, a co technology development project between Singapore companies and the counterpart companies in overseas countries. So I will take the next few slides to share a bit more about these programs. Uh, Hannah, next slide please. So for acceleration program, when we think about the ingredients that a startup actually typically requires when they move into a new overseas market, they will need things like business advisories, they will need mentorships, they will need different business matching and tech showcase opportunity. And this is exactly what the GIA program actually offers to look at the different capabilities and equipping our um, participating startups that kind of expertise uh, before they kickstart their journey into the different overseas markets. So uh, quite a busy map on the left, but uh, those would be the different uh, GIA nodes that we currently have and have programs running to support them. Um, next slide. So when we think about what would success look for us and all that, we have been very happy to see many different tech startups uh, achieving success through these programs. They have either found a new partner, they have actually made certain roadways into a new market. And also we are very happy to see that that kind of success have also extended to um, beyond a few deep tech sectors. But if you look at the examples that I have on the slide, it ranges from ad tech to med tech. And these are the different um, sectors of startups that have benefited from our program successfully. Next slide. So other than market access as a means of helping um, startups uh, within Singapore, we also have the co-innovation programs that looks at promoting R&D and innovation collaboration between different countries. Uh, this network that we have, that you can see on the map right here, connects us to uh, some of these key innovation nodes like Germany, France, and to date we have supported close to 80 projects uh, between Singapore companies and their counterparts. Uh, just very recently in May 2021, uh, we also joined as an associate member into the Eureka Network Network, which probably everybody will know it's one of the world, uh, it's one of the largest um, R&D network um, between different countries and that expands the kind of network that we have to about 45 countries and we believe um, the connectedness and this network will continue to avail um, these different expertise and technology assistance and know-how um, to our companies and our partners abroad. Uh, next slide. So going forward, uh, we will continue to do more runs and programs for acceleration program and co-innovation and also definitely looking at how we can continue to attract uh, quality global startups into the Singapore ecosystem as well. Um, we can move on to the next slide. So just a little bit about uh, an event kind of update from us. We also have our signature tech and innovation uh, flagship conference in Singapore. It's called SWITCH, SWITCH stands for Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology. Uh, next slide, please. So we also believe that uh, a tech conference like ours can bring together different thought leaders and mentors to come together to share about their views about the different latest technology trends, in their opinion, what will be the most disruptive technologies and development that can happen across different sectors. Next slide, please. So we have also gone on to pivot to digital event. And just last year, we had, uh, last year, our kind of fifth edition, we also had, fourth edition, we also had about 15,000 um, attendees joining us at the session. Next slide. So time for a little bit of marketing. We will also return our flagship conference uh, in the early part of November. So besides helping our companies get access to this different thought leadership, it's also for us about providing a digital platform that can continue to connect uh, both the Singapore innovation stakeholders to our global innovation stakeholders as well and to continue to create that platform for conversations to happen. Next slide. 
And this is my last slide. So just as a kind of content, it is what we've been covering. Definitely conference will be a key part. We have what we call Switch Global that looks at innovation uh, opportunities across different markets for our startups uh, to penetrate overseas. We also have digital and physical showcase as well as Thinkshot, which is our very own marquee, um, deep tech, the deep tech startup competition as well that will be happening uh, at Switch. So we definitely will be happy to welcome everybody to join us uh, in November. Thanks, Stefan. I hope I caught that with time. Let me thank you so, so much. <laughs> this, this was super succinct and su super insightful. And maybe let me very briefly summarize. I think one or two aspects are at least become very clear on my mind in this discussion and presentations. First of all, this idea of global connectedness, of tapping knowledge, investment, attracting resource, it, it is driven by, by connectivity, whatever that means. Then we, then we also, we heard it from Patrick, starting very small, building it out into a catalytic event for a you know, platform almost for, for, for Amsterdam, the effects it created, Tala Division for even the legacy of the expo. And Cindy, you, you probably have taken it, taken it um, even a level further by building outbound networks on the back of events that were initially happening in, in Singapore. So it tells us also a story about don't think about one event, one conference, but really think about the an ecosystem or activity that, that allows to, to build this global connectivity out. So it's not just the, the, the one event that, that needs investment and attention, but rather a strategy over years that really helps bring community together locally, that's that's happening in an event, and to, to really attract and make these, these all important connections. We can't reiterate it um, often enough. Just remember this global connectedness, 2x growth, all other factors the same. I think that's the number to keep, keep in mind. Um, at this stage, a big thank you, Patrick, from the next web. Thanks for giving us these insights, and, and um, I'm sure you will be um, most open to, to any questions from the audience. Um, so please con contact Patrick if you do have any, any questions in regards to how to use, utilize events, congresses, um, and respective programs. Tala, super insightful. Um, we wish you all the best for the launch of, of Expo, and I hope everybody will come and, and, and visit Dubai. And Cindy, big thank you. Um, to, to Singapore for sharing the insights about building out this, this global knowledge network and the way you help your startups um, to also go from Singapore out into the world and connect into deep tech clusters. Thank you very much. And um, we will see each other very soon again. Tala, if you meet, move us a little bit on. So the next webinar series should, should be on the screen. First of all, the contact details. So if you have any questions, please, please go back to our panelists and obviously us at Startup Genome. Um, for those of you who are in, in London on the 22nd, 23rd at London Tech Week, um, we would love to meet. We will be launching the Global Startup Ecosystem Report jointly with Tech Nation at London and Partners. Um, and also I would like to just reiterate the launch of our report at London Tech Week, as well as insight sessions where we will have topics such as global connectedness, but also much broader policy discussions um, that's going to happen on October the 13th. So stay, stay tuned. Here you can see a number of the very reputable speakers from many, many places in the world. We will seek to interpret global trends and, and really see how they are, re are reflected and have a, have a very broad, a geographically very broad debate. Again, October 13th at um, the two different time zones in, in the UK as well as in the US. Big thank you again to our panelists, to our audience, and um, we are much looking forward to see, seeing you again on the next iteration um, of the series or at one of the events that we just discussed. Thank you very much and have a, have a great day. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.